I'm so smart. I figured this out. No, you're not. You just followed along. You were an early adopter. You jumped. It's like OnlyFans right now is, is a good example of this. You're an early adopter. You jumped in at the right, right place, right time, right market, right message. And guess what? Maybe you've got, you know, six months, a year, maybe 18 months to, to really profit off of this. And then you're gone. The same thing, like with same thing with Jordan Peterson, like Jordan Peterson was, you know, for a while there for about 18 months, for about a year and a half on top of the world. And then, and then now not so much. Now he's got to work at it. It was easier before. And I'm not saying he was you know, anything bad about the guy. It was just like, it was easier when he first started. And now you kind of have to watch where he's going to go with it or go with that message, go with his audience. He still has an audience, I'm sure. But where is he going to go with it? What's he going to do with that? Um, you look at guys like Miley Yiannopoulos, um, bro, funny as hell, great, you know, provocateur, good guy. He had his moment and he's gone. Same thing with Cernovich, same thing with the rest of these guys. And it's the, it's the, what's the endurance? What's the, where, how do you reinvent yourself? How do you, how do you snap back from adversity? What, what's your next play? What's your next thing? Because you can be successful at something for six months, a year, 18 months, something like that. And then you can be really impressed with yourself until the time, and you can believe your own bullshit until the time that you actually have to work at it. And, and now it's not about so much about um, being in the right place at the right time. It's about working and it's about talent and it's about like ingenuity. <laughs> Anyways, I want to show you guys this because this is, I'm going to stop. I'm just going to riff on this. It's only 11 minutes long so or thereabouts. So let me go over here real quick. Uh, oh, wait, one more thing before I do this. I had to remind myself to go back to the audio settings. And I think I'm supposed to let me know if it echoes. I don't I'm, I'm going to mute myself because I think that's what it was doing before. I'm going to click it back over to stereo audio here and hopefully this will work out. So tell me if this works for you guys. A lot of incels, involuntary celibates, have this obsession with a guy's looks. They're of the opinion that only a good looking guy will be sexually successful. And this is a, it's practically a trope among the incel community. And it's a very destructive idea. It's a fixed idea that's wrong. And let me explain why. In high school and college, good looks do translate to sexual success, no question. Because uh, girls in a high school setting or in a college setting, they're seeing uh, men and all of the men are pretty much the same except for their good looks. And sometimes there is the exception where a guy has a very big personality, a very charming personality, and maybe his looks are not that good. And so he will also be sexually successful. But for the most part, in high school and in college, where everyone is essentially the same, good looks are uh, 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 what you need for sex. There we go. So here's, here's where I want to start. The, here's, here's where we start the first part of this. Um, essentially what he's talking about here is what I covered in, uh, my, my second book, which is preventive medicine. And I will show you where I did that because this was, was the actual timeline here. Okay. So when you look at age 15 till about age 20, right there through the teen and the break phase, I would argue that looks are important all the way through high school, all the way through the party years and even into the thirties. Now, is that the only thing? No, that's that's the only thing women know and girls know back then is because they have no appreciation for money or status. I mean, there's status too. There is prestige in the sense that like women want to get with a good looking guy or teenage girls want to get with good looking teenage guys. And if the guy happens to be the quarterback of the football team, that's good too. He's got to be popular. He's got to have something else going for him too. That, that, you know, but n mostly speaking, he's correct. And I, t I, I, I spelled this out in preventive medicine is that during the, during the teen years, that's all there is. And if you're a teenage guy and you're watching this show right now, you'll, you'll look at this, this timeline here from 15 to about 20. So you're looking at five years and it, it keeps going the party years right now. The reason why I would say that, that women are prioritize looks above all else is because they can. 
And women, when they get to be 20, 21, 22, 23 years old, like I said, this, the peak sexual market value years, when she gets into those years, that's the prioritization of what she finds attractive of what she wants in a an intimate partner is all prioritized with looks at the top of that list. So if they, think of it in think of it in these terms. If uh, if a if if a girl's 15 to say like 25, there's a 10 year span right there. If there's a, a list of priorities like what she wants in a guy, at the very top of that list is she's got he's got to be good looking. He's just got to be hot. Hot. H A W T. He's got to be hot. If he's not hot, then he better have something else going for him. And when a woman gets, when a girl gets from 15 to say like about 18, 20, 21, it's all about, that's all there is. That's really the, the first highest priority. And from there, she sort of developed, I think women on, like even young girls on some level of consciousness realize that when they get to that peak year, like right around 23, years old that's when they're kind of like okay i i'm at my peak of demand and i'm at the peak of my sexual market v value but i'm also at the peak of my uh my ability to be sexually selective that's again why is it 21 forever and not 41 forever because that's what women look back to or look idealize as their prime years for sexual selection oh, i was living it up it was so great like when when women are are like 32 35 36 years old and they've got like a kid or two kids or whatever that's the time in their life that they're looking back to when i was 21 when i was, I was so wild in my college days that's that's what they're looking for and what so what characterizes what made that romantic what made that a a, a time that they look back on well because they were at their peak of sexual selectivity that's when they had the most potential to get with the guy who would have been the one who would have been the one that got away. He would have been like, Oh, I remember when I was in college and I, I got with this guy and I just couldn't lock him down. Or maybe I, I really wanted to stick with this guy. He was really fun and hot and, and cute and everything, but I didn't. And um, he was the one that got away. Pine for that. It, it, again, it's the alpha widow ideal, but, but different. It's the idea of that. Not so much, there doesn't even have to necessarily be a particular guy. Women want to go back in time to be 21, 22, 23 years old because that's where they had the most potential. And for guys, it's opposite. Guys have to go, okay, my, if you're playing your cards right, you realize that it takes longer to become a man. Men must become, women just are. That's part of that narrative. The part of women just are is once you're 22, 23 years old, somewhere around there, that's your peak potential years and because you're hot and you have what most guys, most men from age 15 to 90 years old have and want the most of. So that's what puts women at their, at their peak potential. Um, so he's not wrong about that. What he's wrong about in this sense is that this is all, um, this is all there is. And I'll, I'll, I'll continue here. Let me, hopefully this is not, I'm going to mute myself, but go ahead. Actual success but high school ends college ends and the fact is as you get older other things come into play that are much more important that women find much more attractive than a guy's looks uh, financial success social success the esteem and respect of your peers and your social group that becomes a much more determining factor insofar as sexual success is concerned than mere looks but see what happens is that a lot of incels are basically isolated they are all right yeah as you know i'm probably gonna have to stop this one for a second here what where he's wrong about this is that he presumes that hypergamy is only one-sided he makes the same mistake that peterson makes he makes the same same mistake that a lot of guys who are older like older guys make because they think that because they are remember i talked to you guys about like believing your own bullshit, believing your own pathology pathologizing your success and so what we do is we find ways to explain why we're successful at certain things and, and it also applies to sexual success as much as anything else 
So when you get older and you look back and you go, oh, it was because of this. It's because I made money. It's because I was more, because I had prestige, right? Because I had this. Because, and that's why women want to just like, you know, bang me till there's no tomorrow. And it's completely false. Because what, what, what guys in the doom pill, he calls them incels, but let's just call the doom pill, black pill, whatever you want to call it, looks maxers. The guys who think that looks are everything and that's where it starts. They're not wrong. They're not wrong in the sense that because what happens is you have to remember that hypergamy is a two-sided equation it is alpha seed and beta need alpha fucks beta bucks the alpha fuck side of things is the short-term sexual that he's hot he's the that's it's when women are walking around the mall and they're looking for a calendar and they look at the hot sexy fireman calendar instead of the dad bod calendar because by this logic, the dad bod calendar should outsell the hot fireman calendar. And it never does. It will, ne it will continue to never do that. If that were the case, then guys in like three-piece suits with a rose would be the, the calendar that women want. If that were the case, it would be the guy who has prestige. It would be the guy who has been socially and uh, socially selected, demonstrates higher value because he drives. It would be guys leaning next to Lamborghinis in an Armani suit with a rose and holding it out to the girl. That, that calendar should outsell the Chippendales calendar. That calendar should outsell the hot, sexy fireman's calendar in December, like right before, right before you need a calendar, right? That's, it should. But it doesn't. The, 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 they don't even make those calendars because they just don't sell. The, the, the kitten's calendar sells better than the guy in the three-piece suit because the hot fireman calendar, the Chippendales calendar, the guy who's playing the character but still show. It, it, you want to know why Fifty Shades of Grey is such a big deal? Yeah, there still has to be the guy who has uh, has he, there. He has to have that gravitas right he still has to be a millionaire he still has to be was a christian gray he still has to have a be a millionaire but he's got to be kinky and he's still got to look hot so there's the sexual side of it but there's the also the opposite side of the equation what happens is guys lean on one and remember i told you guys about binary extremes oh it's all looks it's all looks it's all this i just want to it's just the hot sexy fireman ah! Or else it's guys going, no, no, no. You, you just got to have a good attitude and you got to have a good job and you got to, yeah, there's so much more and you got to be, uh, you know, the leader of your church group and you got to have a business and you have, and that's what women really want. The truth is both. The truth is both. But when it comes to sex, when it comes to straight up sex and sexual selection, it starts with arousal. And I have to point this out because I've tried to make this clear for the last 12, 15 years, there is a difference between attraction and arousal. Arousal is based on the physical side. It's the, it's the good gene side of things. It's the CAD side of things. Uh, I think it was mystery, uh, PUA mystery, who, who said it was, there is a, women want a balance or they want some kind of balance between, um, was it survival value and genetic value? And this just goes back to our evolutionary past. They want a guy who is in control, has a capacity for violence, has uh, the, the V taper, the strong jawline, the guy who is, you know, he's got a good biceps. He's got, you know, he's got, he's muscular because he looks like he can handle things. He can kill the saber toothed tiger. He can kill the rival male. He can, he can, he can protect her. He could, but in our, in our evolutionary past, the three P's of the uh, the beta buck side of hypergamy, which are protection, uh, provisioning, and parental investment. Those that's the beta buck side. That's the the long term security side. The short term sexual side used to coincide with that. So if the guy was had a capacity for violence, that means he could protect her. He could crush her, and it's like crush you like a like a worm, right? But he won't because he's the beast that she can tame. And women get off on that. Every romance novel is based on that trope, is based on that mythology. That, oh, he's so, he's, he's buff. He's, he's so hot. He's, he, he's so hot right now. Like he, he's got, you know, he, he, he's big shoulders and he's got a six pack. And he's like, he's six foot tall and all this other stuff. 
it used to be that that physical prowess translated into protection, translated into provisioning, translated into hopefully parental investment. That was the only part that might not have transferred over. But it, you want to know why like women love the mythology of being the being the one or being the woman who can save him from himself, like turn the beast into like civilize the savage beast, turn Tarzan into the you know the lord of greystoke right uh a turn like jane can turn tarzan from this you know monkey man into like a, a good civilized guy or bell can turn the beast into the prince 